Welcome to Western Perspective. I'm Madeleine Lombardi. Mask recommendations are back as the fourth wave of COVID hits Queensland, with the number of cases expected to peak just before Christmas. Hospitalisation numbers have doubled within seven days, and experts say it's not a good sign before the festive season. AMA WA's Dr Corinna Power joins us to discuss more. Dr Powers, thanks for being here. COVID hospitalisations have doubled in Queensland this week. What does this imply? It means that there is a, a wave happening, but in actual fact this is on the top of a background of constant grumbling, rolling, smaller waves. So we're actually breathing in what some have termed a variant soup of uh, COVID-19 uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus. So. It's really important that we do everything we can to uh, flatten this wave out, uh, to take the pressure off our hospitals and our workforces. And uh, obviously, we don't want to be sick. It's, we've got a festive season coming. We do not want to have our hospitals in gridlock. We do not want people being unhappy over a festive season because they've had to cancel uh, the hospitals have had to cancel people's surgeries. Uh, these things take a while to sort out once they've turned into a, a gridlock. I've already heard this is happening in the eastern states with hospitals having um, bed blocks and having to cancel procedures. So it's a very concerning time and we need to do everything we can to uh, lower the risk of this disease. Queensland has encouraged people to wear masks as a recommendation rather than imposing mandates. Do you believe this is the right thing to do? It's, uh, I cannot speak for the government, uh, but anything that will help people actually wear a mask is important. Uh, and the Commonwealth recently uh, put out an advice encouraging people to wear these good quality masks, a bit like the one I've got on, they're called N95s or P2 masks. Uh, the Commonwealth Health themselves recommended people use these masks, but obviously any mask is a help. Um, and it's part of a layers of control. And we do know that even young people can have serious outcomes from COVID-19, uh, whilst mostly the elderly are experiencing a higher risk. It happens all the time that younger people and uh, also children can have quite serious complications. We also have a uh, facing long COVID and this cuts uh, people's working ability. It's very important we wear masks, preferably high quality masks, and there's certainly a lot that the government can be doing to encourage that. There are over 8,000 cases in Western Australia this week. What does this mean for the West? Well, clearly, we're having a spike of uh, this disease. And I think it means that we just haven't done enough to prevent that happening. Uh, ideally, if people are all putting a mask on their face to, uh, to go outside and work, um, outside their homes and work and uh, attend things and not just be in enclosed spaces with poor ventilation with no mask on. Uh, if we can all put a mask on, that's going to help save a lot of illness and disability in the longer term. Summer is approaching soon and the hot climate makes it difficult to wear a mask. What's your advice for our viewers this season? I think if you're getting quite close to people uh, in a crowded uh, area it's it can still be helpful to wear a mask particularly if you're at risk with multiple medical conditions it's still worth thinking about but obviously the risk is lower outside and preferably for our festive occasions we do put them outside uh, if we don't have a very well ventilated option or safe indoor air option so uh, there can, certainly can be times where wearing a mask outside is appropriate uh, if someone is unwell with COVID talking right into your face it's a, and you're very close, it is possible that you, you may uh, become unwell. So it, it's worth considering, um, but certainly the risk is far less outside. And now here is AMA WA spokesman Dr Andrew Miller with his weekly COVID-19 update and medical commentary. 
Hi, thanks for your time. Well, if you'd had any doubts about which direction the pandemic was going to go in from here, they should have been dispelled this week with the news that uh, hospitalisations are on the rise across the country. Governments are talking about people needing to wear masks and the WA Chief Health Officer predicting that we're going to see a peak of cases late in November. Hopefully that will be the case and that it won't carry on after that, but we're flying a bit blind these days because there's very little PCR testing going on, which is really the most accurate way of telling what the numbers are like in your community. And we know that this XBB variant, uh, which is making up about 10% of cases in WA uh, on estimates at the moment, is incredibly uh, easily spread. So. N95 or better masks are going to be the best protection. The, the ones uh, KN95 with the loops around the ears um, are uh, certainly better than surgical type masks. And you should be thinking about wearing those whenever you're going into shops or into uh, public transport, uh, certainly into medical facilities or uh, aged care facilities or um, even into the homes of people who are uh, vulnerable to the disease, people who might be on chemo or, or elderly people. When I say vulnerable, I mean uh, vulnerable to the severe outcomes of ending up in hospital. Of course, this is choking up our hospital system, making it difficult to deal with other things. So uh, apart from just looking after yourself, it also means you're helping out the community if you don't end up unwell, uh, unwell enough uh, to need treatment from the disease. Where to from here? Well, we'll um, see whether the government's serious about slowing this down. I think they'll have to realise that this roller coaster ride that we're going through is unsustainable in the long term and that we need to um, probably revert to wearing masks whenever we're in public crowded indoor locations that don't involve eating and drinking and the places where we need to take them off. Uh, we've got to really closely look at the ventilation. That means measuring CO2 levels, getting it down below 800 parts per million. In many uh, crowded places, it's sitting on uh, 1500, 2000 parts per million and it'll get there very quickly inside an Uber if the air conditioning switch to recycle. So just being conscious of the clean air uh, that you need to breathe and also having a plan. Um, if you're um, an older person or someone with medical problems, having a plan to get hold of those antiviral medications. We do need to be putting pressure on the government around vaccination of our youngest kids. They've uh, started it up in Hong Kong now. Um, most countries in Asia are doing it now for children under five years of age, as well as, of course, the US, Canada, um, Singapore, world leading medical places. So. Uh, let's keep that pressure on because um, we know that there is uh, the potential for long-term health problems with repeated infections. And of course, the math shows that the younger you are, uh, the more likely you're, you are to have a high number of uh, infections of um, SARS-CoV-2 throughout your lifetime. The DNA damage that's measured uh, with the reduction in a thing called telomere, the telomere length, um, is quite dramatic from SARS infections. So uh, that is something that's associated um, with damage to the DNA repair mechanisms. We don't know what that means for the long-term outcomes of kids, but what we can say with some certainty is that the less infections you have, the less number of times you're exposed to this, even if the acute disease um, is not that problematic, uh, the less likely you are to be building up a long-term debt in terms of disease for the future. So let's be sensible, continue to uh, prevent where we can. No need to panic because we know the things we need to do. Thanks for your time. That's Dr. Andrew Miller. Here's a brief weather update. Cold temperatures aren't leaving Western Australia just yet as the mercury will just stay above 10 degrees for the entire week during night time. 26 degrees on Monday and a maximum of 29 on Tuesday, 23 on Wednesday and down to 21 on Thursday, plus sunny and clear skies throughout the week. And that's all from Western Perspective for now. Until next weekend, it's back to you, Ivan and Melly. Sunshine throughout the week is something we all look forward to. Thanks, Maddie. Right now, here's Leo with what's coming up on 6 News tonight. Thanks, guys. Coming up on 6 News, COVID cruise ship, the majestic princess to begin its next trip after more than 800 passengers with the virus disembarked in Sydney. Horror crash video shows the moment two planes collide midair at an air show in Dallas, Texas. And independent candidate Sophie Tawney to challenge the VEC if they reject a how to vote card that leaves some boxes blank ahead of pre-polls opening in the state election. You can see full details on those stories and plenty more by heading to our YouTube channel. Just search 6 News AU to find us or head to our website, 6newsau.com. For now, though, guys, it's back to you.
Thanks, Leo. And that's all weekly news and current affairs. With the latest news on our website, wmnnews.com.au. Don't forget to subscribe to the WAMN Extra News Club so we can continue our work in the community. Full details on wmnnews.com.au forward slash news forward slash extra. From Melly and myself, we wish you good health, good night. See you next Sunday. Thanks for watching.